Hello, this is Kimberly with Almost Adults at Shore Troy Public Library. And today I'm going to show you about mending. We're going to cover sewing buttons on and we're going to cover sewing a huge rip in. Uh, today we're going to look at jeans. So this is a really huge rip. Honestly, when your clothes is got a rip that's more than like an inch or so big it's probably worth just chucking them and, but I'm just going to use these as an example so you guys can see how you would do it on a smaller project so first let's get started with the button sewing on a button I'm using orange thread today uh, you know you could I would highly recommend if you have say a video or an interview to do or a major event, maybe a wedding, or something that there's gonna be a lot of pictures at, to bring a very small travel mending kit with you, which would include a few different threads. Neutrals are always great. A needle, really small scissors. Uh, there are some that fold up to fit in a travel kit. You could just pick up a mending kit as well if you don't wanna make your own. Definitely some small buttons, um, safety pin, um, I'm not sure what else you would want. Um, so that would be great to have with you if you're ever at a major event and something happens and you know what, it might not even happen to you. It might happen to someone, one of your acquaintances and you can help them in a bind. I also recommend the Tide Stain Pen. That thing saves so much clothes. So this button has four holes and I'm going to show you two ways you can sew a button on. Um, sometimes you get buttons on your clothes that are too loose and I, those annoy me, they might annoy you. So uh, you'll also learn how you can make sure that it stays on tighter. So I have threaded my needle and I have tied a knot at the uh, end of the tail. And so we're gonna pretend like this is a shirt and I have the button laid on usually when you've taken the button off or it's missing there's some threads left so you know where to place your button you're gonna start from the back on your clothes and go um, up one of the holes okay and then I'm gonna crisscross and I'm gonna anchor it by doing that one that direction a couple of times And then I'm going to change it, okay? All right, so now I'll just go the opposite a couple times. And yeah, it can get really tricky to find that buttonhole and you're like stabbing it repeatedly with your <laughs> needle. So I found the wrong buttonhole again. And now, oh, there it is. All right, so this should be anchored on pretty well. Um, doing it more wouldn't hurt. Okay. Um, you know, another issue you could possibly... Oh, let me show you the other uh, way you could do if you don't want to do crisscross. I'm just going to take these out. Um, and I'm also going to show you how to do... Have you ever noticed if like a button keeps popping open and it's the same button over and over? Uh, the buttonhole might be a little too big, so I'll show you how to tighten that buttonhole as well so it'll stop coming undone. Because, I don't know, it can be kind of annoying for someone to be like, yeah, your button keeps popping open. Nobody wants that. Um, it doesn't happen as often. So the other way you could do the... Uh, holes on the button is uh what what vertical horizontal I guess it depends on what way your button is so I'm just gonna do like I guess up and down or across I don't know it's one or the other and it'll give you a different look but it will still look great I think a crisscross is the one that you see more often this one looks a little more, um, uh, I don't know what you 
it called this way. It might be more old fashioned, um, but it has just as much uh, strength, just as much staying power as if you did the crisscross. It's pretty good. It's on there pretty well. Okay, so let me show you the buttonhole. All right, so to tighten a stretched out or way too large buttonhole so that the buttons stay is really easy. You're going to work from uh, the back side of the article of clothing and you're going to work from the bottom. So as you can see, they have like a lock at the bottom of the buttonhole and you're going to just continue with that. Okay, so I'm going to be using orange thread so you can see you would obviously use thread that matches your clothing. And um, I do have it knotted at the end as well. So we are going to just make that hole a little tinier by staying as close to the stitches as possible. You're totally gonna see this from the front, but if you used matching fabric, uh, thread, you would not see that, obviously. And this is, I've had to do this before on my shirts and it definitely works. And you would only need to do a few threads well hopefully I think I might have had to have done a lot on mine okay so from the front you can see and obviously you want to make your stitches a lot more closer um, you could just go back and fill in those gaps to make it look like the original sewing and you want to try to keep your needle going in and out at the same um, place. Okay, so I would probably keep going up to make the hole smaller, and that would be how to um, decrease the size in your buttonhole. Okay, so for this big hole in jeans, you know, you have your favorite pair of jeans, you wear them so much, they're super comfortable, and they start to weaken over time, and you maybe want to keep them to just lounge around in not wear them in public uh, and it's just too hard to part with them so there's a couple of things we could do unfortunately this is right up against a pocket which has a tendency to cause wear and tear from all the sitting um, that caused the weakness but there's a couple of things you could do so one way would be is to do um, kind of an invisible extra seam but I don't recommend that just because it's going to cause an extra seam on the inside and that's going to rub against you more than this would it would just feel um, kind of annoying and scratchy so for jeans what's really great is you can do a mending that would um, be visible and look like a, a design like a stitching design. Um, so I want to get rid of all these loose threads and then I'll show you how to get started on uh, doing uh, visible mending is what I call it. Um, it's, uh, you might not have ever seen anyone with uh, this type of stitching, but it's rather common and people usually use colors that stick out and they of, of thread and they use multiple color threads and sometimes they'll make a design i'm just going to show you a simple stitch so i have this scrap piece of fabric that's um pretty much the length of this hole of this rip so i'm going to tuck it in in the back so that in case um it'll probably stop the hole from continuing to tear and it'll give it a little bit of extra color I because of where this is on these jeans this is purely for example I would never myself do this on where this rip is on this size of a hole but it, it doesn't matter I mean you're just gonna you know wear them at home so I want to make sure that I don't sew through the entire uh, side of the jeans. So it's going to have to be one layer. And 
and I might need to see if, yeah, I'm just going to have to unbutton them to lay them a little bit flatter. And denim is bulkier and thicker, so sewing through it might be a little bit more challenging. But with the right needle, you can sew through it with ease. I am using a rather longer needle. This one would be the closest embroidery needle to a darning needle. I do believe they make some for thick fabrics like canvas which would work for denim, okay? So this hole isn't a wide hole, it's just a long hole, but I do wanna get that in there. So, all right, oh, I have a little more thread I need to get rid of. So, let's see here. So one thing I could do is I could go all the way around the outside of this and give it like an anchor and then I could um, go and make my visible um, design, or I could just get started with that now, which is what I'm gonna do, because the visible mending will uh, stop some extra fraying from happening. So I'm just gonna start here and show you some ideas for visible mending. So actually, I wanna come from the bottom. Make sure I go through all pieces of fabric. So I'm gonna start. So like this um, fabric, the scrap fabric is very wide to cover the slit and it should um, be fine. Okay, so here is what the visible mending will look like. You can definitely see a design. I did some small crosses you could do just slashes. This is based off of a Japanese sewing design called sashiko. You can Google to see a bunch of different sashiko stitch design patterns and for mending jeans. It's uh, actually rather common mending style. I just haven't seen it in person myself. Um, so I used some uh, glue stick to get to that scrap piece of fabric attached to where the rip starts. So, because it, it's going to be doing a bunch of, well, bunching throughout as you try to sew. And I will put it closer to the edges of the hole. So I'm gonna put it right on the denim. And I might not have this scrap centered now, unfortunately, so it might not cover the rest of the rip. But maybe it will. Let's see. Looks like it's going off kilter. We'll see. And just a little bit works. I'm just going to push it down and try to adhere it. All right. So I'm going to probably start down here. Uh, as you can see, I didn't put it down far enough. There's a, still a hole, but like that buttonhole see, uh, stitch I was showing you, you could do that here. I'm going to come up from the back or the inside of the pants. I'm going to go, I'm going to make that buttonhole look to close that gap. So this is gonna be a big stitch. This, uh, the problem with big stitches is they could get caught on something and then rip. Now, I don't wanna pull it, the tension too tight. Let me get rid of those extra loose threads. Um, if I do it too tight, it's gonna pucker. So, I'm just gonna Try to stay close to where the stitch is. Now you can do this without putting um, your hand in the back. And it's also in embroidery called a satin stitch. So you can just catch the thread or the, the fabric. Pull it over tail of the thread is coming through. So you can uh, manipulate the threads. 
uh, just keep pulling to make sure that you're not puckering it. And you can feel with the needle that you're not sewing through too many layers of the fabric. But if you can't feel that, you can just keep checking and just keep manipulating. You can just check by looking inside to make sure that it's just only going through the one layer of fabric. So this looks like, this type of rip looks like a buttonhole. If you have a big circle, you can uh, put any type of fabric underneath the circle, make it larger than the circle, and then you can sew around the edges of it. Let me um, see, it's puckering. All right, I'm gonna close this off and show you the edges that you would do if you had like a shape instead of a slit. So let's say that this slit was a shape, you know, a square, a circle, anything. Uh, you would have a piece of fabric underneath your, your uh, shape larger than your rip and you would uh, start on the inside of the fabric let's try here okay and then you're going to go back over the denim actually this is working this would work for any uh, fabric. Okay, I'm going to have to pull it through. Okay, so this would help stop extra fraying for denim and you would, you know, just go all the way around the seam. And you can do your stitches closer, you can do them farther apart. It doesn't really matter. It's however you want it to look. And a quicker way would just be, again, to make sure that you are not going through any other layers of fabric. And just go through. And granted, the closer you get to finishing the shape, the less you'd be able to do that. It would be closed all the way around, and you would just have to be extra careful that you catch everything. Okay, so I'm going to show you how I did the sashiko. I um, did, let's see, I'm going to start in the slit. And I'm going to do, when they do it on denim, they usually spread out the design far out from the uh, the hole that they're trying to mend. So this would go out past. So I'll just continue out this way. Now I have to put that needle through. All right, I'm gonna go back this way. This is far apart, but there'll be other stitches, designs added, so it'll eventually come together. You can do the stitches any size you want. It This definitely does have like a homemade look to it, so it's not everyone's favorite aesthetic. If you don't like it, you don't have to do it, but it is um, kind of a nice way to explore your creativity, see what you like to do. So now I made um, these little crosses, so I'm gonna do that. I'll show you 
I went one way and then I'm just gonna go back and do crosses. Um, And if you were to do different colors, you know, maybe this section, you would do a different color than this section. Some people like to do their stitches to make uh, circles. That looks pretty cool. I have to say I like that. And then you would just continue to do this until you've gone through, as you can see, it does take a long time. This is actually that really large slit though, so that would take longer. If you had smaller holes, it wouldn't take as long and you could explore with different colors and different stitches. 